So here it is guys, by special request, we're gonna check out my entire guitar collection. Let's go. What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay, thanks for checking me out. Yeah, so like I said, we're gonna check out the entire guitar collection today. I kind of skimmed over it in the studio tour video, so I really thought I owed it to you guys to show you more in depth all the guitars I have, and uh, I've got quite a few. And I'll give you a little brief rundown of each one. We're not going to go over the specs so much. We're just going to kind of do a quick overview of each one. All right, so let's start it off with my first guitar, which unfortunately isn't here. It's my Fender Strat, my Mexican Strat, made in Mexico, 1990. Yeah, what do you think of when you first think of a guitar? For, for me, it was the Fender Strat, Stratocaster shape. Had to have it. It was gorgeous. That's what Jimi Hendrix played. You know, so many guys play those. Check out that video. Um, you know, get a more in-depth on that instrument. It's not here because I've just had it refretted. It just got completed, so I still have to go drive back to Rochester to pick it up. Guitar number two uh, was my first kind of super strat. It's this Samick here. This is a 1992 Samick, 24 frets, HSS configuration. It had a Flo Floyd Rose trem, but I swapped it out for a uh, Ibanez Low Pro Edge tremolo. Had to have the body routed out to accommodate that trim because it was a little bit wider there in the back or longer, one or the other. Yeah, modified it a little bit, different pickups. Uh, DiMarzio pickups, that's the Steve Vai Evolution, the original version of the Evolution uh, pickup. Sounds great. This thing is a quality instrument. It's, it's on the heavier side too. This was, until recently, my heaviest guitar. I think it clocks in around eight, eight and a half pounds. A great instrument. I will never get rid of this. I love this particular headstock. Let me get a close-up over here, if you can see that. Samick seems to have changed their headstocks and the headstock logo from time to time. I really don't know why, but this one is by far the best, in my opinion. I love this guitar, guys. It had that kind of slanted heel joint in the back. I don't know if you can see that. But this was 1992, so this is, what, 30 years ago now? And they were thinking stuff like that. I mean, this is amazing. Oh, and you're also going to notice that all of my guitars, pretty much all my guitars, have DiMarzio strap locks on them. So guitar number three, I also don't have. It's not in my possession currently. Uh, hoping to get it back soon. I'll give you a little hint. It's an Ibanez, and it's made in Japan, and it's friggin' awesome. Number four is my Charvel DK24 hardtail. Uh, that's a hip shot bridge. Came stock with Seymour Duncan pickups. I swapped them out for a different set. This is the Nazgul and Sentient uh, pickup combo, which I did a video on that as well. It's your basic uh, one-piece, you know, maple neck, 24 frets, fixed bridge. The camera does not do justice to the color scheme on this, on the front here. The top is gorgeous. It's got like pinks and purples in there, and it's just beautiful. Uh, purple surround, it's, you know, a burst, obviously. And uh, the camera just doesn't, I can never get the colors to show up right on the camera with this guitar. It just ends up looking like brown and dirty and like, I don't know, but it's gorgeous in person. I love this thing, love it. And Charvel uses their own uh, Charvel branded locking tuners, which, you know, for all we know, they're made by Grover or Shaler or Godot or who knows who makes them, but they work amazing, they're fine. Also, you're gonna notice that all of my non-locking trem systems, I use the fret wraps on there, a little cheating technique to avoid those harmonic overtones you get from the the strings past the nut it helps you know not a big deal love this thing it had it would not be complete without the purple DiMarzio strap right sick all right so fifth guitar is of course the satin burgundy mist okay let's just call it pink because it's friggin pink Charvel DK24 two point two point stands for the two point tremolo system which is the Goto 510 bridge. I absolutely love this bridge. This tremolo system is not made for the crazy Eddy stuff. It's not made for the crazy Vi stuff and Joe Satriani. You're not gonna do crazy dive bombs on it because it does not have a locking nut. Again, it's got the Charvel branded locking tuners. That helps. But this tremolo is more for the subtle, you know, nice vibrato, or you can get the nice flutters off it if you wanna do the polyphia stuff. Plays really well. Let me be honest, little update here. Uh, there's a couple small things about this guitar may dissuade you from wanting to get it. One being, uh, this one's kind of a major one for some people. The satin finish, while, let me show it over there. 
While the satin finish is gorgeous, I love the look of it when it's new. After a while, wherever you rest your hands or your fingers or whatever, it's going to get shiny spots on it. Can't be avoided. You cannot avoid it. And once it gets shiny, it's like polished. It's like buffed. You can't get rid of it either. Somebody asked me recently in a comment, can you wipe it away or somehow get rid of it? No, you can't, unfortunately. If that bothers you, it doesn't really bother me enough. You know, it's, it's not a deal breaker. So the, the color is just too beautiful, man. With the white accents. I love this guitar. It is by far my favorite looking guitar. Yeah, of all my guitars. It's just my favorite looking. Uh, it plays really well. Again, this has Seymour Duncan's. I kept it stock. Uh, also, I'll say this. It's got the caramelized, you know, neck, the roasted maple neck, which is great. Feels great. Plays great. However, the roasting process is supposed to eliminate or kind of, you know, get rid of the water. It'll help it essentially retain its shape better. It'll, you know, contract and expand less with the change of seasons and humidity levels. But what I've found so far is... For the second time now, I'm noticing a lot of fret sprout. Well, not a lot, a little bit, but enough to bother you. It definitely scratches your hand. I've already purchased some files from Stumac and filed it down once. Got it in great plain shape, it was awesome, but now it's been about six months, it needs it again. It's really odd because, I mean, a roasted maple neck, you think it's not gonna budge, it's done. They've gotten all the moisture out of it. It's not gonna shrink anymore, but for some reason, it really has. I don't know, I can't explain it. So. Yeah, definitely have to file the, the side of the frets down again. That's annoying, right? So if that's not something you want to do, I don't know. Did I, Maybe I just got a bum one. I don't know what happened, but the frets just ever just enough to bother you. You know, when you're rubbing your hand on it, you definitely get little burrs, little scratches in your inside your hand there. So that's kind of annoying. Oh, one more thing I'd point out too. This has an EVH Borns low friction volume pot. Now, what that essentially means is that it just spins... With no friction you can go from zero to ten with the flick one flick like that i don't know that might be convenient for some people but if you're like me i'm not messing with the volume knob it's all the way up you know have it set when i'm going to record if you're going to play live with a band you're turning it all the way up to 10 it's staying there so I, why have it so loose that you might bump it you know accidentally and just knock it down that doesn't work for me so i'm going to replace that pot at some point with a normal friction pot because i really would rather the volume knob have a little bit of you know, push back a little bit of toughness when you're turning it. Personal thing, that's just me. The uh, no load tone pot, however, I love that because you can click it past the little gate, the little notch, and then the tone is basically just bypassed, which is great if you want to do that. So otherwise though, great guitar. I do recommend it, but you have to deal with the shininess. You might have to deal with the fret sprout. I mean, it's up to you. You know, your mileage may vary with the one you get, but I still love this guitar. Number six is my first Harley Benton. This was the Amarok 6 um, in the uh, quilt maple red burst, whatever. Uh, this thing is great too. This was my first kind of budget guitar purchase, you know, lower price point. And this was actually a B stock. And for the life of me, I can't tell you why, because it's just great. It's got uh, neck through construction. You see that on a lot of higher end guitars, definitely guitars costing upwards of $1,000, $1,500 or more. This thing was, I don't know what I paid for this, like $350, $375, something like that. Insane. And I got it from Germany in three days. How? I don't know. No idea. This thing has, what do we got here? Uh, EMG retroactive pickups. They're kind of lower output. They're not terrible. You know, they're active, so they sound cool. They do what active pickups do. But this particular set, the Retroactive 71s or whatever they're called, they were supposed to kind of emulate more of a passive sound as well. And uh, they sound good, but I think I want to swap them out at some point. Who knows? It's got a, basically, it looks like a hip shot bridge. You know, can you see in the camera there? It's not a hip shot, but it looks identical to one. So whatever, who knows? When I received it, there were a couple little issues. Again, really minor the toggle switch was all loose like the little the switch inside was just jiggly i didn't like the feel of it so i told them about it and uh they reimbursed me i had it replaced and they they took care of that so also one of the pickups was kind of crooked it was set in in the uh hole cockeyed like the screw screwed crooked or something so i fixed that too not a big deal stainless steel frets guys stainless steel once you go stainless you will not go back there is a difference you're going to feel it 
less maintenance, they last for either years or forever. I, I've yet to find out, but you know. And these are Grover, yeah, Grover locking tuning machines. Can you get me? Can you get that? They also work fine. They work well for me. I don't know. Uh, it's got a volute. This thing is well built. It's solid. It's a solid metal guitar. There's no reason why you shouldn't purchase one of these if you like the look of it. Also, you gotta like a little bit of a thicker neck. This thing is not a baseball bat, but it's definitely got some heft to it. It's super comfortable though. It's a lot of fun to play. So, all right, I lost count. What are we at? Seven, six, seven, eight? I don't know. Uh, got this on Reverb. Got a super deal on this thing. I don't know why the guy was getting rid of it. It's absolutely a gorgeous example of the Ibanez RG920 QMZ. So, RG series, uh, the 920, I don't know what that stands for. QMZ was quilt maple, and the Z designates the zero point tremolo system, which if you're not familiar with that, it's got springs in both directions. It's got two springs in each direction holding the trem in place. So essentially, it just takes more force either way to maneuver the tremolo. But what that does is the pro of that is stable tuning. The trem is floating, but it's floating, you know, it's being held in both directions. So it'll return to a zero point where you set it afterwards. And it's just great. The downside of it is you can't do flutters. And also this particular arm, it screws on, but it's either too tight or it's too loose. I hate this when it's doing this thing. You know, that might not bother you, but you go to grab it and it's not there. That's, that's nonsense. And then if it's too tight, you know, it stays in your way. It's like, okay, I'm done with you. Get out of the way. But look at that finish, guys. Look at that. Right? And I put in bare knuckles. The silo set, these are probably my favorite pickups that I own right now. Out of all my guitars, these things are just so easy to dial in great tones with. They sound phenomenal. If you want to do 80s shred, 80s hair metal stuff, this is your instrument. And yeah, in keeping with that, I had to go with the crazy patterned uh, strap. This happens to be the Steve Vai strap. I was like, you know, go big or go home on this one. So this thing is great. The wizard neck is very thin. Let's see if we can get a shot on that on the side cam. All right. And the Ibanez fretboard is marginally wider this way than kind of your fender, your standard uh, neck width. I mean, not much. It's like, I don't know a millimeter or so, I have no idea. But you do feel it, it's a little bit wider in your hand, but it's still comfortable to play. But that thin neck, I mean, you either love it or hate it. With me, I don't mind it at all. This has, this neck has a, what is it? Five piece, Oops. really comfortable to play. But you know, I say that about all my guitars. I kind of go through phases with guitars, like I'll play one guitar like this one for a week or two, you know, and then move on to another one. You kind of feel like you want to give each one attention like your kids you know if you have kids but this one is gorgeous too right it's just i mean that's fire man that thing just looks badass i'm sorry you know and if the 80s look isn't for you that's okay you know but it is for me and i'm gonna stick with it so so i was on a reverb kick for a little while and this was the next purchase i made from reverb uh, another ibanez rg this is the 1070 pbz yeah uh pb being poplar burl and the z again would denote the zero point trem system that's in the back obviously this is an hsh configuration the other one's just uh two humbuckers which i actually prefer the two humbuckers because that single coil just gets in my way when i pick you know that's just me again this guitar also does not pick up very well on camera it just looks kind of dingy and browns and like dirty but it's anything but I've only seen one finish of this particular model that looked better, and it's the NAM version that got passed around that particular year. So this was a 2017 Ibanez, uh, made in Indonesia. It's very similar to my other one. You know, it's just a little bit newer. It's got a few upgrades that came after that. So it's got different pickup configuration. This one has stainless steel frets, which again, love it. Love stainless steel frets. They feel better too when you slide on them, or rather when you bend on them. There's not so much grittiness and grind, and they just don't wear away. They just, less friction, I don't know what you want to call it, but they feel better. And this one has 11-piece neck, 
Yeah, let's do the side cam on that one. That neck is absolutely to die for. Just beautiful. I love that neck. And the heel cut, the heel joint, is amazing. Super comfortable. You can get right up there, 24th fret, no problem, and beyond. And because it's got the blue, you know, purple and blue, we had to go blue with the strap lock matching. So that is my other Ibanez RG. My one and only seven string. This is also an Ibanez. RGA 71AL. Uh, I don't know what any of that stands for, except the seven means seven string. It also comes in a six string version, or did back then when they made it. I forget what year this was. It comes stock with bare knuckle aftermath, pickup seven string version. And uh, you got volume. You don't need a tone with this because, you know, nobody's using a tone with this kind of guitar, right? Am I right? Uh, the back is nice, too. It's got a great finish to it. Kind of a matte, satiny finish. And the neck is five-piece. Oh, those are Goto locking tuners? Let's get it over here. So the Goto locking tuners are my favorite so far. They just have a nice fluid feel to them. I don't know. Personal preference, whatever. The truss rod. What's nice, what Ibanez did was essentially they made it so you could, uh, let's take that off. So we can get this on camera. You can just use your fingernail if you're not aware. Slide the little door sideways and you can access the truss rod without having to unscrew the three screws to get the little cap, the little cover off. That's great, man. That's just genius. And then when you're done, slide it back into place. Good to go. What do you guys think of that one? So I really fell in love with my first Harley Benton Amarok, the red one, so much so that I decided to buy a second one. Uh, the thinking at the time was that I was going to leave the red one in standard tuning and then get a second one for more detuned stuff. As it happens now, I keep them both detuned. They're both in like, I don't know, drop D or drop or D standard or drop C sharp. I don't know what they are. But, you know, standard scale length, 25 and a half inch, inches. So you definitely don't want to go too low with it. And uh, this one's a little more comfortable than the other one. I don't know why. Same build. I'm sure it's the same factory. Everything's the same. That neck through design is beautiful. You see those on what? Kiesels. You see them on uh, Solars and a bunch of other more high-end you know, manufacturers. So to get it at this price point is just unreal. This one was not a B-stock, but uh, I think I still got a deal on it. I can't remember. Anyhow, the red one is um, Quilt Maple. This is Flame Maple, obviously. The black and blue color is pretty sinister. I like that a lot. Again, Grover locking tuners are awesome and stainless steel frets, EMGs. I, yeah, I'm going to swap out one of these Harley Bentons. I'm going to swap out the pickups. I'm thinking of going Fishman Fluence Moderns. I'm going to try those out because I have yet to play those or own those. So we'll see what happens. But there we go. Harley Benton, Amarok. Next up, uh, yeah, I went on a Harley Benton kick for a little while. This is the Harley Benton. SC-552, this is the latest version of the SC-550. I don't think it's the same as the SC-550 Deluxe, so their nomenclature is a little confusing there. And we've got uh, Tesla pickups. They got rid of the Roswells. It's, it's supposedly an upgrade. They sound decent. You know, they're kind of a medium output. And the, But the finish is just beautiful, you know. Cool. Had to get like a psychedelic, you know, kind of vintage vibe strap for it. That's cool too. This thing is pretty heavy. I think it comes in, it clocks in at like eight and a half, nine pounds. But it is weight chambered, you know, chamber reliefed. So it's not as heavy as a real Gibson. And uh, this is a modern take on, on, the, on the Gibson. Look at the back. Look at that heel joint. That's really nice, you know. There's no big chunky block to hit. It's a very smooth transition. So that's like a modern take on it. And you know what? I'd rather have this in a Gibson. Once in a while, it's not really, you know, the vintage thing isn't so much me, but I just couldn't pass this one up. Got a really good deal on it. It's got a volute on the back of the neck. It's got the aged tuners. Well, I actually upgraded them to Clusens locking tuners because it did not come with locking tuners. See that over there. But stays in tune really well, plays really well. It's a lot of fun. I ought to use it more. Some people really love this guitar on the channel. So we'll try to get this one on a little more frequently. But yeah, if you're going to go, if you're like going to go budget version of a Les Paul, you know, you maybe you're looking at Epiphones. Those are still what, five, six, seven hundred dollars and more. This was like, I don't know what this was, like 300 bucks, something like that. 350 shipped. 
I mean, insane. Uh, don't quote me on the price exactly, but it was in that range. Extremely affordable. And once again, guys, Harley Benton, stainless steel frets at these prices. It's unreal. Just get one, you know? Unless you're a diehard Gibson person or you've got, you know, tons of cash to burn on guitars, get a real Gibson. I don't care. Uh, you're going to have tuning issues, but this one really does not. It stays in tune really well. Plays great. It's a lot of fun. And if nothing more, it's just a beautiful piece of eye candy. I mean, look at that, right? I really don't know how they got this guitar out at this price point with all the features on it, but it's great. It's a lot of fun to play. Okay, so I did a video on this one very recently. Uh, this is a real Gibson. This is an SG. I acquired this. It was gifted to me. Yeah, very fortunate. Beautiful. Uh, I'll leave a card up above so you guys can check out the dedicated video to this one we just did recently. I was very inspired to write some new stuff. Not expecting this thing to be able to do the heavy metal, the modern metal stuff, but it can. And I put a heavier gauge of strings on this because being a Gibson, it has the Gibson scale length, which is 24 and 3 quarter inches. So it's a little bit shorter. You can go a little heavier gauge and the strings aren't too tight to bend and play on. It's really comfortable. There it is, guys. In all its glory. Oh, and by the way, this was a 2016 model so it's a little bit newer but it still has the vintage look and vibe and uh, super light super comfortable you can work out with it you know it's like six pounds all right you guys haven't seen this one yet at all this is a fender usa fender according to the serial number this was manufactured between uh, 1979 and 81 so it doesn't really tell you specifically so it's one of those three years but yeah what do you guys think of this one i haven't demoed it on the channel yet because it needs a, a, a refret job badly the frets on the high end are like down to nothing and yeah it's not even worth playing at this point so but it looks beautiful it feels great it's got a little bit of a thicker neck you know fender every few years they change the uh, profile of the necks so i don't know what series neck this is particularly but it's a little bit thicker than my mexican one ever so slightly and uh, it's got the fender kind of vintage looking tuner set there get it over here let's see if we can see that what do you guys think of that, huh? It's got the bigger headstock, and I can't wait to play this thing. I might swap the pickups out of it at some point, but we're not going to mod this one too much. You know, this is a real special one. It just needs a refret job, so we got to get it to the tech soon. And uh, there you go. It's beautiful. Although, I guess there was a lot of discontent with the, uh, the three-bolt plate that they went through for a couple of years there. You see that? I don't know if it's as stable or if it moves easy, easier. I don't really know what the problem was, but people don't seem to like that. And also there's like a micro tilt adjustment. There's a little Allen bolt inside that hole there that you can get at to kind of micro tilt the neck a little bit this way or that way, if need be. But this thing needs some work. It, so it needs a refret, needs a new nut, and probably truss rod adjustment, all that good stuff. So we'll demo it once it gets done. That might be a while. It's a nice project. We'll get it done sometime this year in 2022. Okay, finally, my bass. This is an LTD. I know nothing about bass, guys. I'm sorry. I don't even really like playing bass, but I know it's necessary if you're going to record your own music by yourself at home. So you got to have a bass. Uh, I got a really good deal on this thing. I think this runs about $550, $600 brand new, this particular model. But I got it for about $300 out the door. Five-string bass. Five-piece neck. It looks awesome, right? It looks pretty sinister. It's pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't really want the, you know, the P bass or the jazz bass or any of those. I wanted something that was kind of modern metal looking. And this fits the bill. There you go. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for the guitars, guys. Uh, that's the entire collection. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you like these? I don't have any intention of selling or getting rid of any of these guitars at this point. I love each and every one of them, you know, like my baby. And each one gives me a little bit of different inspiration to write something different. And uh, they're all fun to play in their own way. So... Thanks a lot for hanging with me. If you made it through the whole video, destroy that like button. Just kill it. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Peace out. See it.